when I make my films, I actually now think uh, about two audiences. I think about a film audience trying to make a powerful cinematic experience, uh, you know, people seeing it in theaters, people seeing it at home. But at the same time, I think of the key policy makers who need to see this film and how they will read it. Storytelling is very important to public policy. It helps create a mental image for people. It helps them identify with a particular issue in society personally. If you're going to persuade people and have them remember what you've done and feel passionate about it, you've got to reach into them and you've got to touch their souls in ways that, that, that leave a lingering impact. Outrage was a film about closeted politicians who voted anti-gay, and the reason you're, you weren't aware of it was because the mainstream press ref, refused to report on the hypocrisy. I first met Jim McCreary in the fall of 1975 at the Sigmund Lee Fraternity House. I knew from the moment we met that he was interested. Jim used the fraternity house as his gay bar, and he would find young men who he thought he had a good chance at having a sexual relationship with. Outrage certainly shifted the way the media reports now on the private lives of gay legislators. I mean, prior to outrage, there was a double standard. Outrage not only brought this issue to the public, but it also brought the debate into the press community. And, and now, you know, you can see, since the outrage came out, I mean, the reporting on this, this kind of hypocrisy is pretty much ubiquitous. For me, it was extremely frustrating and painful to watch. And it's changed how people think about you know, sexual orientation and public policy. And, you know, that kind of introspection and retrospection, I think, is, is really powerful. The Invisible War is hugely important, bringing about policy change towards rape and sexual abuse in the military. Everything came to a complete change the, the day that I was raped. I got there in February. Um, by April, I was drugged and raped for the first time. He said he was going to the bathroom, and he came into my room, and, and that's when he raped me. The entire time, I was screaming and yelling for help and for him to stop. Nobody came to the door, nobody came to help me, came to my rescue or anything. And we would hear these stories over and over and over again. And every time we walked out of those interviews, it was just, you know, we were enraged. And I think that sort of reflects the, the, the tone of the film as a combination of just devastation and anger put together into one. So The Invisible War is not an easy film to watch. It pulls at your heartstrings, it makes you angry, it makes you be outraged that a system is in place that leaves people who are sacrificing themselves on our behalf so vulnerable with no real alternatives. The impact of Invisible War is crazy. I mean, it's off the charts, I think historic. There's no question, there's now been dozens of bills put forward, many of them passed in the last year and a half since the film came out. And senators and representatives have both said that many, if not most, of those bills are as a result, direct result, really, of them seeing the film and then them getting motivated to act. Kirby Dick's legacy will be his courageous attack on injustice and giving voice to people who haven't had a voice, being able to give and empower those who have been vulnerable and haven't had power, and thereby in improving our communities and the people who live in them. And uh, you know, if you look at the Price School mission, it is to make that difference, to improve people's lives worldwide. And if you're gonna do that, you have to understand where the challenges are, you have to be willing to look at injustice, and you have to be willing to say, we're not gonna take this anymore. We're actually gonna go and make that positive difference. How many people do what he does with that kind of intent, intelligence, determination, and rigor for very little money, very little glory, and achieve all that he has? And I'm really, really glad and grateful he's getting this kind of recognition. This really does a public service, and I'm, that is, you know, irreplicable, and I'm grateful to be able to honor him tonight. Kirby. 
on behalf of the 46th Congressional District of California, I want to congratulate you on receiving the USC Christ School Vision and Leadership Award.